Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking about the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. And if you didn't know, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator is a type indicator that seeks to categorize you into one of 16 personality types based on your general behavior and how you behave in various situations. So there are four scales here, introversion and extroversion, intuition and sensing, feeling and thinking, and judging and perceiving. Now the MTI is under a lot of critique and it has been subject to a lot of critique and this is a debunking the Myers-Briggs type indicators video. Personally I work with Neil Young in psychology. I'm very interested in how people think, how people feel and why we make various decisions and I'm interested in health and how we can reach personal growth and a happy state and to feel more fulfilled with ourselves in our life. I believe all of us have different passions and values and interests. But I believe the Myers-Briggs type indicator is poorly suited to classify your personality type and to define your interests and your core passion. I believe the Myers-Briggs type indicator often falls subject to people's own negative views about themselves. And I believe the Myers-Briggs type indicator can reinforce a negative idea of yourself. The result you get on the MTI test is directly dependent on how you feel about yourself and if you are more confident about yourself you are going to be more likely to type and to find a personality type that fits you but if you are less confident about yourself or more subject to stress or anxiety or limiting beliefs about yourself perhaps due to traumas or negative experiences in relationships that might cloud your personality type. You might find yourself behaving more introverted because you've been subject to heartbreak and negative experiences that have gotten you to pull away more from others. Or you might type as less intuitive than you actually are because you've been exploring a lot of ideas but you've gotten a lot of disappointment in your life and you've lost a lot of stability and you started to become a little more bitter and you start to feel like it's no point and you start to become less idealistic. So how you respond to the Myers-Briggs type indicator will only serve to reinforce your current image of self. If you have a negative idea of yourself and who you are, you're going to be more critical of yourself. You are going to hold often limiting beliefs about ourselves and most people have limiting ideas about ourselves. And the MTI does very little to combat this. In fact, the MTI often reinforces the idea that your personality type is the same as your skills. A lot of personality type instruments call your personality type your skill or your ability. They call the INTJ the mastermind, stating that if you are an INTJ, you are always going to be very skilled at executing plans and strategies. You're going to be a genius at thinking ahead, seeing the future and planning towards this future. But in many situations, especially when we are young and finding ourselves we may run into obstacles and a lot of INTJs might experience their plans falling apart spectacularly. They may fail to anticipate problems. They may rush their own process, making it perform worse than it would have ideally. Or they may become more stressed and more anxious about problems and they might become less insecure about their plans and more withdrawn. A lot of experiences can cause us to feel badly about ourselves and to perform worse than we are and that reduces that brings up a question do personality types really exist or are they in themselves limiting are we all all types can anyone be any personality type are we constantly changing now the Myers-Briggs type indicator themselves seem to suggest this they believe that personality type is something static but at the same time most of their results are constantly changing people are constantly retyping as different personality types every time they take the test and the uh, our views about ourselves are constantly changing you know you're gonna have experiences in your life and that's gonna change how you look at your past and it's gonna change how you look at your present situation if you have positive experiences or if you're in a good relationship or at a workplace where people encourage your strengths and put you in a state of flow and make you feel good about yourself and confident you're going to look at and feel very good about this but if you come into situations that will look at and make you look at yourself more negatively reminding you of your weaknesses that may cause you to try to overperform or make up for these insecurities by forcing yourself to be in a way that you are not and I've spent a lot of time investigating personas and I believe most of us have some kind of persona or some kind of mask that we hold on to. And sometimes we switch between different masks in different situations. Around family members we might become more reserved and more careful to share what's on our mind. 
But with some friends, close friends, we can express ourselves freely. We can talk about anything. And we can feel welcome and invited to share without being judged. And so we have to take this into account. And you know the Myers-Briggs type indicator provides absolutely no context. They say this is who you are, but they don't say when or why you are this way. And that is why the Myers-Briggs type indicator is a typology, not a psychology. The Myers-Briggs type indicator does nothing to try to predict what's happening inside your own little head. Why do you think the way you do? What makes you think a certain way? Why do you do what you do? What makes you a certain personality type? Simply stating this is how you are, that makes the Myers-Briggs types indicator subject to the four effect. Often the result you are given will feel very relatable because the description will be very positive. It will talk mainly about your strengths and what you're good at. And this will get you to think and to want to relate to this subject. Yes, I want to be this person. Because we can all recognize a strength or a skill. We can all say that it is something positive to be outgoing or to be friendly or to be smart or to be tactical or to think strategically. We can all recognize that these are good things and we can all recall situations when we did these things and when we did these things well. The Myers-Briggs type indicator is subject to overinterpretability, which is when they provide statements that basically anyone can agree with. Yeah, you are extroverted, but sometimes you also like to be alone. <laughs> yeah, you like to be around people, but sometimes you also like to be alone. You know, that's a kind of statement that pretty much anyone can agree with. Sometimes we like people and sometimes we like to be alone. When? Why? That's psychology. And the Myers-Briggs type indicator doesn't deal with that. That is also why the Myers-Briggs type indicator has very little articles and content on personal growth and development. Okay, you got this type. Now what? What do you do next? What should you be this type? What should you develop your inferior functions? Should you develop other functions? Should you do other things? Should you change yourself in some way? What if you don't like being this way? What if you would like to be something differently? Should you try to be yourself? Should you always try to be yourself? Should you never act outside your personality type? Can you be something else? Can you go into and behave in a different way? Now, I believe we can. I believe our behavior is constantly changing. To me, personality type is a spectrum. You have certain values, a certain way of being when you are happy and when you are true to yourself. But then in different situations, you can adapt and adjust and to be in different ways. That is just a sign of being healthy. The more healthy you are, the more free you'll be. The easier it will be to reach into the traits and abilities of other personality types. If you are happy and fulfilled and come from a, from a perspective of being relaxed and feeling at peace, it is easier to think like other personality types and to look at what they do and to understand them and to get into their mental frame and to act the way they do. But often it is that when we go into other personality types, we become subject to more stress and more anxiety. And if we do this for a long time, we may develop anxiety and depression and various forms of insecurities. If we want badly to be a certain personality type and we go deep into this, we might come to believe, we might come to experience a lot of insecurity. We want to and we try very hard to be more organized and to always be on time, even if it makes us more stressed and even if it puts us in a situation that uh, has more to do with avoiding a negative outcome. You know, a lot of people are more focused on avoiding negative outcomes and avoiding to make mistakes than to do what they love. A lot of people spend more time doing and avoiding things they hate than doing what they love. And you know, that doesn't make a person happy. Avoiding a negative state doesn't make you happy. It makes you feel nothing. It makes you feel empty. And that's also something that is very core to our common experience. We live in this tabula rasa society, you know, where anyone can be anything. And everyone feels a little empty and everyone has chosen to be more or less the same way. We have all become pretty stereotyped and everyone is acting and mimicking one another. We are all dressing more or less like each other. So we take on the quirks and behaviors of other people. We all try to act, and most of us try to act to fit in. And this, of course, causes a widespread feeling of alienation. The more you try to fit in with others, the more apparent it becomes to you that you don't fit in and that you have all these things you would like to say but can't say, things you would like to do but can't do because you fear judgment. And this is uh, 
why I believe a lot of people feel misunderstood. And you know, perhaps the worst thing about what the Myers-Briggs type indicator is what it's done with the INFJ personality type. By labeling it the rarest and the most misunderstood personality type, it attracts all of us because all of us feel misunderstood. All of us feel rare. All of us feel like we are unique and we are all are unique. We all have unique ways of being and we all feel a little alienated because we live in this society where everyone is adapting and trying to be like everyone else and nobody can be themselves and everyone feels judged for who they are. No matter who they are, no matter what personality type they are, they all come to share this belief and it's so attractive to want to relate to this personality type. It's so attractive to want to feel like this personality type, but it keeps on just reinforcing a negative image of yourself. You are this personality type because you are misunderstood. You are misunderstood because you are this personality type. Therefore, as long as you are this personality type, you will always be misunderstood. Therefore, because personality type is static and will never change, you will always feel misunderstood. You know, that's the kind of experience that really keeps people from sharing and speaking their mind and telling people what's on their mind. You know, it's hard for me sometimes as well. I also feel misunderstood. I also feel like people don't get what I'm saying and that I'm talking over people's heads and that people miss my point and I make videos and I feel insecure about the content and how it's received and I feel like... Uh, I don't know how to explain things and I can't translate what's happening in here to what's out there. It's very hard to do that. And especially if you also want people to like and to receive the content well and to think it's something good. But I have to remind myself that this has nothing to do with my personality type. You know... We all have more in common than we have differences. That's something the Myers-Briggs type indicator also fails to convey. We are all more similar than we are different. Deep down, we can all recognize and understand one another. We can understand other people's values. There is nothing about being an ESTP that I am opposed to, that I think is a direct bad thing in itself. In fact, I can admire and say, wow, that's good, that's impressive, that's really cool. And I can be... Uh, caught along and enthusiastic about those things and say wow that's really cool that you have that even though I personally don't really enjoy working or being that way I can ex I respect that people are that way and I can see and understand that it's good for that person and what I want to spread and what I want to do is just what Carl Jung also wanted to do just spread understanding make people understand each other's better help a husband understand his wife, you know, help uh, people manage relationships and understand different people and different values to say, oh, so you value that and I value that. That's really cool, you know, uh, to get people to di realize different things and to keep people from feeling liber uh, limited and to make people feel liberated, you know, to break people out of the box. You know, if you're caught in the INFJ box or in the INFP book box or the ENTP box and you believe, oh, I'm an ENTP because I'm a sociopath or I'm an INFJ because I have had uh, bad experiences with psychopaths earlier in my life or I'm an INFP because I'm depressed, you know, then I feel for you. I really feel uh, for you because the Myers-Briggs type indicator is directly to blame for this and for keeping us in this and for not doing anything to mitigate or to help people find their ideal and what they can do next, what they can move forward towards. The Myers-Briggs type indicator was developed to help people identify their best fit career. If you answer this way, if you are more outgoing, if you are more creative, if you are more of an idea person, then you should have that career and you should go there. You should get this education and then you should go to that place, you know. That's how the Myers-Briggs type indicator worked. It was primarily on just cementing, okay, so that's how you see yourself. Well, then that's what you should do. But the Myers-Briggs type indicator shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't be doing typology. We shouldn't be categorizing you based on your current identity. We should be doing psychology. We should be trying to understand what's happening inside you. 
We should be actually trying to read your mind. <laughs> we should try to predict your drives, your values, who you are at your best, what your core motivations are. Our personality tests should ask us about our interests and who we are in flow, what makes us happy, what makes us feel better, and it should guide us towards those things. And it should help us, give us advice on how to change our environment and our situation to become happier, to become more fulfilled. It should identify stressors in your life and how you can reduce these stressors. How you can feel better in your life and more relaxed and more at peace with yourself. And in doing this, it should avoid reinforcing all those stereotypes. INFJs are misunderstood. INFPs are depressed. ENTPs don't have any sense of morality. And we should understand. And this is the equation that I've been working on for a really long time at New Jungian Psychology. I've been trying to create an equation for health and personality. I've been trying to connect and show that an introvert who is more in tune with their introversion will also become more outgoing. The more you get to know yourself, the more you introspect, the more you take time for privacy, to think, to form your own identity and your own ideas, the more easy it will be to start making these YouTube videos, to start expressing yourself, to get out there, to share what's on your mind. So your level of development, your outgoingness, your open-mindedness, your conscientiousness, your morality, your control over your own decisions, your own life is directly correlated to how developed your different letters are, how extroverted you are as an extrovert, how in tune with your intuition you are as an intuitive, how in tune you are with your thinking as a thinker, how in tune you are with your perceiving as a perceiver. I want to change from simply mapping out this is what you are right now to finding out how you can improve and expand on yourself and daily habits, daily things you can do to feel greater flow and greater fulfillment in your life as an ENTP. How can you maintain a state of flow? Well, you can engage in a brainstorming process. You can invent, you can come up with ideas, solutions to various problems. You can change and make alterations, edits to things that happen around you. You can explore new ideas and get in there and do research on things and to figure things out. You know, the more you know about your personality type and how it works, the more you can find out about flow and outgoingness and openness and all those uh, different aspects. That is my goal, that's my aim, that's New Jungian Psychology. And if you want to support that, if you want to be a part of that project, come to patreon.com slash ericdor and leave a contribution. Or come to my website, ericdor.com, read through the different content on the different values, do my flow type test and share your results with me and the people around uh, on Discord or on your Facebook groups. Uh, let them know who you are. Think about and introspect on who you are. Think about how you can become more happy in your life how you can become more fulfilled and think about how you can spread happiness to other people and in your relationships, how you can make other people more fulfilled, how you can produce and spread flow in the world around you. So thank you all for being here and uh, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being patient with me for these two weeks while I've been developing a lot of new content. I'm really looking forward to these next weeks and for this year and for everything great we're going to do together to challenge the old stereotypes, the old ideas and to build something new together.